So I would like to show a couple more features of the Blender Ghetto pipeline. One thing I didn't get to do in the previous video was talk about compound collision shapes. So I think compound collisions are a super useful feature. I'm not going to go over setting up the whole add-on here in this video. I'm just going to show you how to use some of the features. Uh, if you haven't set up the add-ons, you're going to need to go back to the, the last video, and I will, I will link that above. But compound collision shapes, uh, or compound primitive collisions is really what they are, is very, very useful for um, keeping the collisions in the engine as simple as possible. So for instance, let's say you had a shape like this. So obviously, if I just try to throw a box collision on this, so we can set a box collision, I'll set up my export path. So let's call this uh, compound collisions.gltf. We'll save that, export. Um, I think you probably know what this is gonna look like. It's just gonna be a box that wraps the whole thing, which is not really what we want, right? So we can see it here. We have a collision shape that wraps around the whole you know, the whole mesh. All right, so how do we, how do, we do better? Uh, first pass, you could do, you know, the lazy way is to just use a convex collision. So we could use convex. Um, that's not gonna work either. So let's try convex. And we notice we get this like stair step on the side. And that's because convex wraps to the exterior geometry. And then finally, we can do a tri-mesh. Now, tri-mesh, this is mentioned in the Blender documentation. It works. Uh, it looks pretty well optimized as well. So kudos to Godot for a really good implementation. I just see a couple, you know, collision triangles there. I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing any excessive collision triangles. But this shape is harder for the engine to deal with. It doesn't matter if it's Jolt or Godot native, um, and I think Jolt is native now in 4.5. But we can do better than this. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're going to change this to a not have any collision shape. And first of all, I want to show you what this looks like when you change the collision shape to none and we hit set and export. What we literally get is just a static body and a cube. So what we want to do is we want to create a series of compound collision shapes. All right, so let's do that. Uh, the easiest way in Blender is to select different faces. Um, let me turn on screencast keys, but I'm going to select just this, this part here. We're going to duplicate and separate by selection. Um, so, you know, it might seem a little weird, but what we're doing is we're just extracting the geometry to make the collision shapes. Okay. So we can do the same thing with the other shape. Um, and honestly, you only need like a skeleton of the geometry. If I just shift D this part, you can see this is not really the whole geometry but that's fine, right? We're just using the geometry to wrap a collision. So now we have these two things, which clearly this is not even a full piece of geometry, but I'll show you how this works. So I'll probably hide the parent right now and we'll press N to get it back into the pipeline. And what I'll do here is I'll set this as a box shape with no body, okay? So box shape, no body, um, box shape, no body and set. And we can export this as well, but it's not going to be exactly what I want, but I'm just kind of doing this in steps to show you how the pipeline works. We've generated the collision shapes and they seem to be correct in terms of their location, but what we need to do is we need to parent them. So the add-on supports some level of parenting. It's not infinite recursive, but it supports a certain level of parenting. So we can actually, if I hold control, and then click on Q, we can go control P, parent to object. And now we can see this parent cube is, you know, the, you know, it's parent to those two collision shapes. So now what we get is basically a static body that um, contains two collision shapes, two primitive collisions. And I promise you, this is the most efficient way to generate this. Um, obviously inside the editor, this would be a big pain to try to create these collision shapes, but um, this is another way that the add-on is used. I did use this method very recently in Bushcraft Survival. There's a video on it that you can check out. I can't remember if it was a video or a stream, um, but you can check that out. The pipeline also handles rotations. 
and translation. So it sounds simple, and it is in a sense. So if we export that, all your collision shapes in geometry do follow the whatever rotation you use. Um, but just to kind of describe the problem, I did a YouTube short on this way back, trying to explain the math involved. The pipeline does handle a lot of the math under the hood. And if you're curious why it's a bit of a complicated operation, the static body itself has the same transform as the mesh. That's kind of fundamentally how it works. Whatever the parent mesh, whatever the origin of the parent mesh is, the static body will have that as well. But things get weirder when you get into the primitive collisions because um, this needs this primitive collision needs to have the rotation. So this has the same rotation as the mesh. So it has you know it has the minus or the twenty seven point six degrees um, on the x axis, but it has a different translation. You'll notice its origin is at a different location. So I don't need to bore you with the details. I guess uh, the simple thing you can realize is that you can rotate that parent body however you want and then those uh, primitive collisions will move with it so let's see what else do we see here so this the static body will never have any rotation the mesh should have rotation and then i believe we'll see rotation on this guy um, as well as the other two so these have rotations but because the origin point of these two objects is the same as the origin point there, then it's good. I believe convex collisions, it's been a while since I've actually, you know, coded this. Convex collisions in Godot, when you set those up, those can have the same origin as the mesh because, you know, internally Godot is just finding the external geometry and wrapping to it. But anyways, all this to say, you will notice that your primitive collisions don't have the same origin, nor is it possible for them to have the same origin. If they had the same origin, it would be down here somewhere, right? So um, once again, this is just another tiny little thing that the add-on does, if you're curious why this is useful. Uh, like I said, I do get some comments every now and then where people were like, oh, the import hints do that. Uh, the import hints do not do this. This is a, an extra layer of, of functionality that just makes it easier to, to import stuff.